Hi, this is a bit of a weird one, but welcome back to the Chisholm Hunter channel. My name is Harrison and I'm back from Indonesia. And today we're buying a new watch. But before we buy the new watch and use this weird mic, we're going for a coffee. Ah yeah, could I get a cappuccino please? So we've got the new coffee, Caffeinero, the best, and we're going to the Argyle Arcade where we're gonna pick out our new watch. But enough of my rambling, we've arrived at the Argyle Arcade. The Chisholm Hunter is to our left. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, shameless plug. But let's have a walk and let's find this watch. Okay, we have been nerding out enough in the arcade. We've been so distracted by all the watches, but we have eventually found the one that I'm going to buy. And if you have a keen eye, you might be able to spot it in this window just here. I have talked about it in a lot of other videos. So let's go inside and let's try this on. This is the best bit of watch purchases. I have to say the anticipation's killing me. <laughs> wow. And that is it on the wrist. Look how beautiful that looks in the light. It's almost like a really muted green dial. It's not quite like a deep, vibrant green, but it's quite muted. It looks a bit khaki. And that is it. We've just purchased our Tissot PRX with the green dial. So let's take this back to the studio where we can get properly hands-on and analyze this watch a little bit. Right, we are back in the studio. We're back in our home turf and we're going to be talking about the specs of this Tissot PRX and discussing why I bought it in the first place, why it was so attractive to me and why it's so good for the money. So let's begin with the case diameter of this Tissot PRX and then talk about all the rest of the specs, the colors and why I think it's incredible. So the case diameter comes in at 40 millimeters. This is slap bang in the middle. It's perfect for my slightly slimmer wrist that come in at 6.5 inches. My Amiga Seamaster is probably at the one end of the spectrum. It's probably the biggest that I would ever go and it comes in at 42 millimeters and the Hamilton Khaki Field that I have on at the moment comes in at 38 millimeters. I would never go any less than 38 and I would never go any more than 42. So 40 lies in the middle and it fits perfectly. The case thickness of this model comes in at 10.8 millimeters. And this is quite a compact piece. It sits quite close to the wrist. And I'm a huge fan of that. And the reason I'm a huge fan of that is because it's less likely to get damaged. Watches that sit that little bit closer to the wrist are less likely to get damaged. And in my lifestyle, out and about, when I'm exploring the Dolomites, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, or I'm exploring Loch Lomond or somewhere in Scotland, it just fits my lifestyle. And that's why I'm not as big a fan of sort of domed glass. I prefer flat sapphire crystal because it's just more durable to me. The lug to lug of this model comes in at 44 millimeters. So this is quite a compact piece. It's made entirely from stainless steel and most of the stainless steel is brushed. Now, to me, brushed is more durable than polished because when you wear polished, although it's beautiful and reflects the light wonderfully, it does scratch that little bit easier or not scratch easier, it shows scratches a little bit more. So if you scratch brushed steel, it doesn't look scratched, but when you scratch polished, you can clearly see that those scratches. And for me, I kind of have OCD. So when something has a tiny little scratch on it, I'm drawn to that tiny scratch and I just can't look past it. The bracelet on this piece is a bracelet that I've always wanted to own. Actually, the whole aesthetic of this watch is something that I've always wanted to own because it's directly inspired from the famous, the infamous, should I say, Gerald Genta. I will never be, be able to afford a Patek Philippe. I'll never be able to afford an AP Royal Oak, but I can afford a Tissot. And for the money, this is stunning. The bracelet tapers in and it is that 70s feel. When you reflect it in the light, you can see clearly each link getting illuminated by that light. It hops down a light as you move it. It's just wonderful. It has a butterfly clasp at the back and on the wrist, this sits wonderfully. By the way, for those of you that are new here, and I'm acutely aware that there is lots of new faces here, so welcome to the Jism Hunter channel. If you could hit that subscribe button, it would be much appreciated to get to hear me rant about pretty much just watches most of the time. Before we move on to the face and the crown of this model, which in my opinion, the face is one of the most attractive features on this model, especially when you consider the price. Let's get this on the scales and tell you guys how much it weighs because I always forget to do this. And a lot of the watches that we review, I never really buy them, but I have bought this one. They are quite new. So you might not have felt them and sort of felt the weight of them yet. So it's good to give you a comparison and to show you the weight. So the weight of this one comes in at 139 grams. 
Just for a comparison, because I know this is a very new watch, I have a Hamilton Khaki Field on the NATO strap, and I'm gonna put this in the scales so that you have a comparison. Because I know that a lot of you will have held and felt the Hamilton Khaki Field before, but might not necessarily have held and felt the PRX. The Hamilton Khaki Field on the NATO strap comes in at 57 grams. This is heavy. This is a lot heavier. The crown of this model is quite prominent and quite pointy. It's not as stubby as I would have thought, but it doesn't make it any easier or harder rather to turn. It's quite easy to use and I quite like it. Normally in these kind of watches, I would go for crown guards. I do like crown guards on sports watches, but it is 70s inspired. And in the 70s, they didn't have crown guards. So I understand the heritage and I quite like the design on the PRX. It's quite angular and I like that. Moving quickly into the dial, the hands and the indices are highly polished and they reflect the light wonderfully. And because that dial, and we'll move on to that in a second, is so dark, the sort of indices stand out really, really nicely. This is such a clear watch to read. And that's partly due to the lack of bezel. It doesn't really have a bezel, so there's more dial real estate. So the face looks a little bit bigger and it's so much clearer to read. Then we move on to the dial and it's jaw dropping. Let's begin with the texture of the dial and then move on to the color of the dial. So it almost comes in a waffle texture. It has tons and tons of squares more or less and it also has a sunray pattern running through it. Now this almost gives the dial three layers of depth, not to mention the date window being lowered into the dial so you have that extra layer. I'll talk about the date window in a second. The dial comes in a dark, khaki green. Now this is important to say, when I was looking for this watch, I almost didn't spot it because of how dark the green is. I genuinely thought this was blue or black. And that is something to bear in mind. It's not as prominent and green as you see in maybe some of the images. But in my eyes, that's a good thing. I don't like greens being too vibrant. I prefer them being a little bit muted. And this is just, it's beautiful. The date window is at three o'clock. And I know what you guys are thinking, especially those of you that have been with the channel for a long time. Believe it or not, the channel's been going for almost a year. I don't like date windows at three o'clock. I prefer them at six o'clock and that's just me being perfectly honest. But here's the thing, for the price of this watch, for the movement of this watch, for the design of this watch, the all encompassing package is brilliant. And because of that, I'm, not gonna complain about the date window. And I actually made, or Drew and I made, a video on this watch saying that it was almost perfect. But the thing is, no watch will ever be perfect to the owner. There's always gonna be things that you'll change, always going to be things, little tweaks that you tweak. But that's the game. And it makes you want more. The movement in this model is a powerhouse of a movement. Now that just because this is an ETA movement does not mean it's a bad movement. ETA are brilliant at what they do, hence why so many watch brands buy ETA movements. I'm honestly more of a fan of an ETA movement than I am a brand trying to make an in-house movement and not making as good a job as the ETAs. ETAs are powerhouses, that is what I'm wanting to say. But let's get into the specs of this Powermatic 80 movement. The Tissot Powermatic 80 unsurprisingly has a whopping 80 hours of power reserve, beats at a frequency of 21,600 VPH and has 23 joules. It also features a Nivacron anti-magnetic hairspring and let's get into the details of that because it's an interesting one. Basically, you know when you go through airport security, for an example, the big magnetic thing that you go through is magnets and that scans you and it sees what stuff you have on you and they pull you where they decide not to. But what this magnet can do is magnetize your watch and when it's magnetized pretty much it stops working. This Nivicron balance spring prevents that from happening and it can resist magnetic fields way more than what that magnet can put out which is normally the biggest magnet that you'll come up against. So this watch is borderline indestructible to magnets. I mean, I wouldn't test that theory out, but on paper it is. So why did I buy this watch? Why did I personally want to choose a Tissot PRX? Well, the reason in part is because I have a great relationship with Tissot. I love the brand. I love what they stand for. They create affordable luxury and I truly, truly believe that. Next up is that in my collection at the moment, I have dress watches, but I also have sports watches. 
I don't have an in-between. I either wear my Amiga when I'm out and about, or I wear my Grand Seiko when I'm at dinners or, or fancy charity balls. I don't have an in-between that can cushion that, that can be worn into work, but also out to the dinner and night. I only had two sides of the spectrum and this would fill the gap. And I think for a lot of people, this will fill the gap. Not to mention that it's affordable, so it can quite easily be added to your watch collection. I also think it's quite discreet. It's quite understated, but it also catches the eye. And let me expand on that further. The green that they used could have been a hugely vibrant green. It could have really caught the eye, but they've muted it down. They've made it more of an olive dark khaki green because they're not particularly flash. And I like that. And that is why I bought the Tissot PRX. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit this subscribe button and this watch will be coming to the Chisholm Hunter Watches Instagram page really, really soon. Drew and I are gonna go get some lunch and he'll pay for it because I just bought a watch. I'll see you soon. <laughs>